Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome to a little update video. I know people love update videos, right? But this is an update video about my time so far in Japan. So it's coming up to one month here in Tokyo, like barely under a month since I will have moved here to Tokyo so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that and I also did a little uh, Q&A type sticker on my Instagram stories and I'll try and do that from time to time so if you have questions for me uh, that I might be able to answer in the future feel free to follow me on Instagram it's also Tree, and I'm always posting stuff on my stories not always the most interesting things it's just a little old me but feel free to follow me there so uh, before we start with the Q&A portion, I just want to try and update you uh, as much as I can. I don't want to make a rambly video, but hey, this is me we're talking about. So one month, I have been in school for less than two weeks. Um, still here in my shared house, obviously. Still don't have a tripod. <laughs> Um, I am trying to manage my expenses. Moving in here, even though it's just a shared house, it did have a few unexpected fees and, you know, etc, etc. So I'm trying to manage my expenses at the moment. So there are things that I still want to buy. I'm all over the place already. How am I all over the place? Um, yeah, let's start with moving into the shared house, I guess, since we're approaching the subject. Um, shared house so far is Fine. I knew it would be difficult for me to be living here and having to share everything except my, my room here with a whole bunch of people and since the borders are not open to students and you know workers and stuff there are more and more people moving into this place as the weeks go by and like seeing new faces so um, <laughs> yeah it's not the easiest but I was expecting it and you know like compared to the uh, whole capsule hostel thing that I stayed two weeks in which was a total nightmare this is so 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 much better like we can't even compare it it's much more comfortable I have my own space uh, but sharing is not easy I'm not gonna say that I'm super nitpicky about cleanliness but uh, I'm also not super tolerant either like when people leave their nose clippings where they're like they're shavings in the sink or like leaving like toilet paper on the floor and stuff i'm like come on this is not a hotel even if in a hotel i don't find it that acceptable so it, there are a lot of things that are already driving me a little bit crazy so hopefully in the future i'll be able to afford my own place but i'm not getting my hopes up for that one because you know it's tokyo and prices are super high and especially the moving in prices like just the moving in fees with the key money and the gift money and the guarantee money did i repeat myself i don't know but i mean it's at least like three thousand us dollars i think just for the first month to move in and i'm trying to stay in japan for at least a year right now i can only afford six months so you know it's it's a process and i'm trying to take it day by day here in their shared house um so yeah bathrooms i'm getting used to it um shower room and bathroom like actually it's a room with bath in it there's like two rooms with a bath in it and the rest are shower rooms those are okay i mean girls lose a lot of hair and a lot of them don't pick them up and you know <laughs> you just gotta get used to, to it and pick up after yourself as much as you can and hopefully others will do the same yeah the one thing that i cannot get used to though is the kitchen area um if you guys don't know i have really really bad emetophobia so fear of vomit and it gets triggered by the smallest things such as seeing old food um, in a plate, old food in a sink, and the smell of old food. So you can imagine in a shared kitchen space, you just walk in and you're bombarded by the smells and it immediately triggers my emetophobia. I lose my appetite, I feel a little nauseous, and that is why I almost never go cook in the kitchen. I go to the kitchen like once or twice a day to do my dishes, 
but that's it um, I know it's a little weird it's a little like a little princess can't cook in a shared kitchen it's annoying it's frustrating I feel like I'm not getting the whole experience but honestly it, it beats the point like you're going to the kitchen to make yourself some food and to eat and I cannot eat after going in the kitchen so it's not like the cleanest area but it's mostly triggered by just leftover food and food smells basically so that's like a big thing that's an issue at the moment is the kitchen the shared kitchen space so right now I'm dealing with it as best as I can I think I'll talk about it more in another upcoming video that I'm trying to put together but I guess that's a good way to move to the next point is that oh my god where does the time go ever since i started school i feel like it's you know wake up work school study homework sleep repeat ultimately so wow <laughs> um it's crazy it's honestly crazy um i would hope i i had hoped that i had more time for myself i like literally had no time to draw, for example, that's something that's really lacking in my in my day-to-day -day life at the moment. I barely have any time to draw, even if I have the time, I have no energy at the end of the day. So right now I'm still figuring things out. I'm still trying to figure out, like prioritize and you know juggle, but obviously the things that are gonna bring in some money are gonna take top priority, like my editing job and then YouTube does earn like peanuts but <laughs> I earn a little bit off of YouTube so those kind of take priority over like more fun things like drawing and stuff which is frustrating and then obviously when I come home from school I study and do homework and by the time I'm done doing that it's like past 8 p.m. so it's time for me to go to bed and wake up at 6 and go work out and then start the day so that's not really what I was expecting but I know that I'm still figuring things out that's something moving on to the next section something that I'm really trying to like teach myself is like one thing at the time and this is still me getting used to things and this is not like how it's gonna be permanently or how I'm gonna feel permanently I'm still overwhelmed by a lot of things, much less I'm getting used to hearing Japanese and I'm not freaking out when someone tries to speak to me in Japanese and I don't understand. Obviously I'm not a patient person, I also have anxiety, so it's, you know, it's a lot to deal with. Um, my mental health is definitely off, but I think it's all part of the process. Like I get anxiety at the most random moments for, for no reason at all. I could be just walking down the hallway from the bathroom to my room and suddenly my, my chest feels super tight and I'm, I can't breathe. And I feel like there's nothing to hold on to. Like I'm just floating. It's, it's super weird, um, but it, is a, it, it has been a stressful time and it, I have to get used to it and I'm, um, miles away, a hundred thousand miles away from anything comforting, so I don't have a, a support system here yet, like uh, like really a steady group of friends and stuff, so it's all a process and I have to tell myself that every single day. Um, yeah, I, I'm just bouncing from one thing to another, but I feel like it's been smooth so far. Like we talked about the home, we talked about my health. One thing about health um, is that I've been getting way more headaches. I have a headache like right now. Um, and I almost never get headaches in Belgium, so... I'm not sure what it is, air conditioning or the fact that I'm wearing masks all the time, even in school, and it's just like breathing in the same air, or like it's, I guess it is super humid at the moment, so it could be the humidity, or that something's different, hopefully it just passes, I'm not used to getting headaches, and it's, it's, it's not fun. I'm sure there are so many things that I could and want to say to you, but right now, because I want to avoid rambling, um, and going from one thing to another maybe we should go into the Instagram questions and see what there is in there and I'm already losing my voice <laughs> so question how difficult is Japanese language school 
Um, so if you don't know, I did all my admin and choosing school via Gogo Nihon. So they take care of all the admin and they have a specific list of schools they partner up with uh, for that exchange. It's not really an exchange program, but you know, I think you know what I mean. And on their website, Gogo Nihon, you can choose the level of school that you want. Not not really the level, like the intensity, the speed, that's what I mean. How much time do you want to spend studying after school and stuff like that. So I chose like a medium level one. And um, what was the question? How, how difficult? So I've gone back a few classes because I forgot everything. I guess that's something I didn't mention before when I was explaining it. Um, I basically completely bombed the placement test that I had to take when I was back in Belgium because I hadn't studied, read, done anything in Japanese for the past six months. I forgot, I had forgotten everything, completely bombed the, the placement test and now I'm back where I started at the beginning of 2021 when I was doing those online classes with my school. So I'm kind of doing the same lessons over but because it's not 6am, I'm not online, I'm in a classroom, the audio works fine, I feel like I'm learning much much faster. It's still intense, I still, it's still difficult learning a whole new language, but I feel like I'm making progress. I am listening to Japanese every day in the streets, in, in the subway, I'm seeing the signs in Japanese, so I definitely feel like I'm making progress and it's much more encouraging that way than taking the classes online for sure so is it difficult i mean for me it is learning a language is difficult japanese is not an easy language the amount of homework is decent um it's like one to two hours of homework a day at least but yeah so far it's manageable what has been the biggest surprise thus far um Oh, I don't even know where to start or how to answer that question. I feel the biggest surprise is how impatient I am. I know I'm impatient. I know I want things to be like close to perfection very, very fast. Like even when I'm sick, I always think that, okay, in two days I'm, I'm gonna feel better for sure. And then in two days I still feel, feel sick and I'm like, what the hell? It's a, kind of the same thing here. I'm like, okay, it's been a month since I've been here. Uh, I would have hoped that I would have like a super cool group of friends and we'd be going out and it's not like expectations but it's hopes, you know, the expectations weren't that high because of everything that happened in the past two years but you do hope that it's kind of be like magical and perfect like super super fast and it could still happen i really do hope it could still happen like getting this amazing group of friends and having like amazing outings and etc etc and my career flourishing whatever that is art youtube whatever um so i'm, I'm still surprised at myself that i'm you know clinging on to like this little perfect vision fantasy thing and being disappointed even though like i have no expectations but i'm still disappointed anyway i'm getting a little too deep i don't think that question was meant to be too deep uh what am i surprised at i guess maybe the amount of paperwork i have been warned but i didn't expect it to be like this strict like if there's one thing off on the paper they're gonna reject your application that's what happened with the bank thing it was a nightmare, it, ugh, it just consumed my first week here, like that bank, opening a bank account <laughs> was just a nightmare. I don't know how to answer that question. I'm surprised at how people ride their bikes, like crazy people. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's leave it at that. <laughs> I think I've answered it long enough. Uh, how many new friends have I made? I don't think I would be able to call anyone my friend quite yet. I would consider acquaintances or classmates, but I'm working on it. I mean, I feel like I can get along with pretty much anyone, but making friends is difficult. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. Like, you can have a nice chat and be super polite, have a good, like, laugh or something, but actually becoming friends 
is a whole other thing that's something that's very difficult for me maybe because i have trust issues i don't know but i'm definitely looking forward to it um one of my big goals here is actually to make friends because like these pa the past two years in belgium have been lonely af so friends my tribe my group of people if you're out there this is your call come to me or call me to you whichever works best <laughs> yeah what are you missing from belgium except from pachi oh my god that's another thing that surprised me actually but i guess that's not like japan related how much i miss my cat is insane i did not expect it obviously i'm i knew i would miss him but i didn't expect it to be at the point where it feels like almost like heartbreak you know like i still look for him every time i open something plastic i'm like oh man i just my cat is gonna come over or i wake up in the morning and i look over in my bed and he's not there it's like that's the amount of mental agony not being with Pachi is causing me I'm tearing up right now it, that's a surprising thing but anyway, the question was what things do I miss from Belgium? obviously my family um, my grandfather I don't like being far away from him in case there is an issue I want to be able to get there as fast as I can other things I miss from Belgium are obviously food <laughs> I miss fruit, why? Uh, well there's no point in saying why is fruit so expensive in Japan? I knew, I knew it was going to be expensive. I knew it would become a luxury, but I do miss the accessibility of fruit and veg, for sure. I miss cooking because no using the kitchen here. Ah, I really miss cooking and baking. Like it, I wouldn't even do it that much in Belgium, but just having the option there. Right now, I don't really miss places yet. I have felt a little bit homesick, but not in the sense that I've missed a place because I didn't really have a home anymore in Belgium, but I've missed the comfort of home, for sure. Are you able to practice the Japanese you have learned in school in real life? Uh, yes, I definitely feel like um, I've spoken more Japanese. My legs are going numb from being on the floor. Ooh. Yeah, I definitely feel more accustomed to hearing Japanese. I don't think I've used any of like the recent lessons I've learned. Like I'm not incorporating them into sentences right away. But the fact that I'm hearing and speaking it a little more, feeling more comfortable, sometimes it just comes out in Japanese. Sometimes I, I feel myself trying to think in Japanese, like trying to make, put sent like create sentences. Um, yeah, I feel like I'm I'm getting there, I'm not getting close to being fluent at all, but I'm getting, uh, there's progress for sure. Daily routine, I feel like I've already touched upon that on the intro. Basically, I wake up at 6 a.m., I go work out, shower, breakfast, I study a little bit and then I work. Um, on my commissions for editing or for YouTube mainly those are the two things that take up the most of my mornings then I get ready for school I go to school oh wait I have lunch I get ready to school I go to school I have my classes I come home I eat something light study do homework relax if there's time sometimes do a little drawing like a little tiny drawing in my sketchbook go to bed and then i'll start over again that's basically my routine during the week and during the weekends i'll usually do chores try and go out and explore at least one place in tokyo um, vlog if there's a vlog planned still figuring it out <laughs> is it like i imagined i feel like i also kind of answered that with what's the biggest surprise thus far it's not like i imagined it because i didn't have much expectations i had a lot of hopes obviously but i knew the shared house would be difficult i knew juggling work and school would be difficult I guess I'd hoped I'd have more time and more energy for other things and I'd hoped 
that I would make friends so much faster but I forget who I am and like I said I don't make friends super fast I get along with everyone but I don't make friends super fast so and also the place I live in I didn't expect it to be this far away from everything and to be such like an old person town um, <laughs> I guess that's something, but it's really pretty and there are not a lot of nice areas I can walk and nice parks and stuff, so that's really nice. Um, but yeah, is it how I imagined? Not yet, but my imagination has a tendency to run wild. Definitely. As well as my hair at the moment. It does not like the humidity and I haven't bought products to stop it going from like do I have a bucket list for what I want to do and see while I'm here not yet again with the whole expectation thing I do want to visit a lot of Japan but right now I didn't expect to have so little time to do it so yeah I hope that in the following months I'll figure out my schedule my routine and that I'll maybe be able to afford my own place, maybe closer to central Tokyo and I'll be able to do much more I, I hope, I don't know, I don't want to get ahead of myself I'm like in a few months but I don't know what's gonna happen but yeah, I guess my bucket list is I really want to make friends for real like real friends, I'm really craving that I don't know if it's gonna happen but oh, that would be so good and like r really immerse myself in Tokyo life and explore J a lot of Japan and document not like little vlogs that I've been doing uh, so far but like something like a real trip that I want to document and stuff like that so not exactly a bucket list yet I have a few things in my list that I want to but yeah I have hopes Let's just leave it at that. And I guess something on my bucket list is I really want a Chansey plushie. Everyone knows I want a Chansey plushie, but it's sold out everywhere. <laughs> What's the best unexpected thing I've experienced so far? The bank thing? <laughs> Maybe the bank thing? <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay. I'll give a negative answer and maybe a positive answer. The negative answer is how close-minded some things are. Um, so the bank thing with all the like the three thousand documents they asked for, I uh, provided, and every time they rejected them for like the tiniest detail. Whereas like for other students at a whole different bank a different place in, in the city it worked out just fine with exactly the same documents but just because the one I went to I don't know they were so just close-minded about these little things uh, that was really unexpected and frustrating positively is I didn't expect so much resilience and strength within myself because I know I keep bringing back the past two years, but guys, they have messed me up. Like, I can't even explain how hostile the inside of my head still is to this day after these past two years of just nothing, of being on standby, of just limbo hell. <laughs> Trying to find the words. And the fear that I had was coming here with this state of mind that I'm bringing all my baggage with me and I would just drown here in Japan. And yes, I'm drowning a little bit. It is overwhelming. I am struggling with my mental health and my anxiety and not being anywhere comfortable at the moment. But I am surviving, more than surviving actually. I'm stronger than I thought I would be and I think that once the trauma of these past years start like to subside and wash off of me I will get even stronger and go back to the person that I know 
that I can be, like less anxious, less scared, less like closed up and protective, <laughs> like my Fitbit. I think it's because I'm doing hand motions, my Fitbit was like, yay, you walked so many steps today. <laughs> I did walk a lot in my own defense. Um, so unexpected, yeah, the fact that I am stronger right now than I, than I thought I was. It's probably not what you were expecting as an answer, but that's the answer I have for you right now. Wow, this video is so long. Um, I think I'm coming at the end of the questions. What is it like in Japan right now, seeing as student and business will about the only foreigners there right now? Um, it's very homogenous. <laughs> Not, uh, not many foreigners, though there have been a few. I've crossed paths with a few foreigners. I've heard French a few times, which surprised me, like double take. I just like heard French and I feel like foreigners are definitely starting to um, flow back and I have definitely been seeing more. Oh, and masks. We, they're still wearing masks. Well, we are still wearing masks everywhere. I mean, I think in transportation it's mandatory, but in the streets it's not, and yet everyone is still wearing masks and you're kind of looked out in a weird way if you aren't, which is a shame because summer is coming along and when I left Belgium, the mask had just been like, not abolished. <laughs> masks were done in Belgium, just like at the end of March when I was leaving and now they're, I have to put them back on and I, I don't like them. I'm, I'm really done with masks. I'm, I wish everyone was done with masks, but I guess we're not quite there yet. Final question. Is it possible to get a job and stay in Japan now that I am here? Uh, yes, I can work part-time. I have a certain uh, number of hours that I can work if I get a part-time job. I don't see myself doing that at any time soon, but I do have, I did ask for that. Um, permit when I applied for my visa. So I think I'm gonna leave it here for now. I'm sure I've got a thousand things that I wanted to say, but it's fine. Um, I'm still working through the backlog of videos. I think there are two more until I am up to date, but by then I'll maybe have filmed some more. <laughs> anyway, if you have extra questions, if I have left more questions unanswered after this video feel free to ask them in the comments or uh, follow me on instagram because i will probably do more question uh, q a type stickers in the future so yeah this is the end of my day my end of the saturday and i'm gonna go relax and maybe do homework ugh we'll see there's so much i want to say and show you that um there will be time i'm here for at least six months hopefully one year if we make ends meet. So to make that happen, please give the video a thumbs up, share it, leave a comment, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already. It's gonna be a fun ride. I hope you're doing well. Big hug. I'll you all. See you in the next one.